Today on Bloomberg Quinn, we're joined by the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. Mr. Khan, thank you so much for speaking Very good to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, you're on a trade mission here in India, and there's clearly one message. London is open. This is a message that you've been, you know, you've been spreading across the world. But I want to understand from you, post the Brexit war and the past couple of years, and especially since uh, you took up office, has it become tougher to pitch London uh, in, in a post-Brexit scenario? Well, actually, the reason why we, I began this campaign was because of the Brexit vote. Mm -hmm. My concern was that after uh, the Brexit vote, when the UK voted to leave the EU, people outside of the uh, UK may think wrongly that we're going to stop being open-minded, outward-looking, we're going to become inward-looking and insular. And these three words, London is open, is a, a state of mind. It's an attitude Londoners have. We're open to business, to partnerships, to joint ventures, to friendship, to tourism, to students. And it's really important that, uh, that I do what I can as the mayor of my great city to reassure Indians, uh, but also to persuade my government why it's in our interest to be open-minded and outward-looking. Ms. Khan, you know, there's something that I'm guessing everyone seems to ask you here in India, and it's a big concern because while the message clearly is London is open, well, the British government's stance on immigration has been a cause for concern back here in India, be it Indian students aspiring to study abroad uh, in the UK or businesses planning to set up in uh, the UK. Because of these, especially the revised visa norms, they perhaps consider Canada, Australia, the US, as, as feasible options. I know you've been an open critic of it. Yeah. You've been lobbying uh, against it. But is there perhaps a solution that can be reached there as well? So what I'm saying to my government is actually uh, Brexit necessitates a change of policy around immigration. Right. Uh, we've got to recognize uh, that actually us leaving the European Union poses huge challenges. And the best way to mitigate that is to attract talent from India. I'm very critical of the British government's policy to remove the post-study work visa. That's led to talented Indians choosing to go to study in America right. or Canada or Australia. And all the evidence is, if you're talented enough to be an overseas student, you will go on to become a chief executive, an innovator, an investor, but also you fall in love with the city you studied in. And we are losing this huge soft power, this alumni. Uh, that's the first reason. But secondly, we now have empirical proof that the government's policies led to fewer students coming to London and choosing instead to go elsewhere around the world. And uh, I'm very competitive. I don't want uh, New York or uh, LA or uh, Sydney uh, or Montreal to get these talented Indians on to come to London. I'm scared. You know, also, when you talk about this connection with India, and it's an intrinsic, intrinsic connection with India, when it comes to cities like Mumbai or Bangalore, are you also looking at them as a city-to-city -city connection, saying London and Mumbai, London and Bangalore, more than just, well, India on the whole, because it's a big country. You raised a really important uh, point. I, I, have a, I, have, I have a phrase that I like using, which is a saying from somebody else, which is, if the 20th century was famous for, uh, uh, sorry, the 19th century was famous for uh, empires, 20th century famous for nation states, the 21st century is about cities and about mayors, because we can move much quicker. I was with the chief minister this morning, right. talking business, talking about how we're going to work together. We've signed a cultural agreement with Mumbai. Uh, my team's going to Bangalore, I'm going to Delhi. Right. We'll be making another announcement in uh, Delhi. I've also made good announcements, good, uh, good deals with the mayor of Paris, the mayor of Chicago, the mayor of New York. That's the future. We're far more dexterous, far more mobile, uh, and we can move far uh, quicker. That's the future. Also, when you talk about ties, especially with a city like Mumbai, I'm guessing Bollywood plays a key role <laughs> because you, you, that is something you've been yeah, working on. You're, you're, you're really lobbying for a lot more post-production work perhaps in England. I know there's a lot of stuff that already happens there. Can I just say this? Don't underestimate India's ability to affect the world with culture. Uh, Bollywood is huge. Uh, I mean, uh, not, in, not just in relation to where you film, right. not just in relation to post-production work, not just in relation to casting, but also in relation to your ability to influence people. So it is a fact. Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Buddhists, Christians, Jews, people, members of an organized faith or not, love Bollywood. And so I was with Karan Chahal yesterday, right. trying to persuade him to do even more Kabi Khushis uh, in London, film even more in London, right. with Amitabh Bhai and uh, Shah Rukh Khan, right. persuading them to do more in uh, London. Of right. course, 
uh, Katrina Kaif is a, is, a Brit, is a Brit and a Londoner, and so we're encouraging more films to be filmed in London, right. more post-production work, use more of our uh, talent, right. but also you've got some amazing post-production visual effects, right. frame store, double negative, uh, doing great work, winning Oscars, and so the future is not simply uh, the great, great movies, but also the high-skilled, world-leading post-production stuff, and I want some of that partnership work with London as well. You know, Mr. Gannon, you're talking about all of these celebrities, be it on social media or wherever, uh, the, wherever the case may be, you have a lot of fans all over, and in London, of course, as well, but one person doesn't seem to be, well, a fan of yours seems to be uh, President Donald Trump. Based on whatever we've been seeing on Twitter, I just want to get your take on it. How do you react to tweets like that when you actually end up you know, seeing them? I, I've heard you say you, you're, a, you're a reluctant participant in that, but, but how do you react when you see stuff like that on social media? Well, my view is very, very simple. I've got a very important job to do as the mayor of uh, London, and uh, I think that being president of the USA must be a full-time job uh, as well. But when you're in a position of leadership, right. uh, you, that brings with it a responsibility. And my view is actually, uh, in the 21st century, we've got to learn how to not simply tolerate each other, but to respect, celebrate, and embrace each other. And to give the impression that just by virtue of being a member of a religion, uh, that means that you're not able to be an American or to be a Westerner, right. I think is wrong. And the reality is, uh, hopefully, I'm living proof, as indeed there are millions of other people who are living proof, mm -hmm. that it's possible to be a Muslim and to be a Westerner. It's possible to be a Muslim and to believe in human rights and to have uh, you know, liberal views. And I think to give the impression that it's uh, somehow mutually exclusive to be a Muslim and to be social liberal or to be a Democrat or to believe in human rights or to love America is just not the case. And look, and I, and I, you know, I will stand up for what I think is uh, the right thing to do. And you know, if it means sometimes responding uh, to tweets from the most powerful man in the Western world, so be it. But listen, I don't want to. I don't go looking for fights. I'm a reluctant participant, and I'm, I'm going on doing my job to spread the message. Uh, London is open. Fair enough. As a last question, Mr. Khan, uh, I do understand uh, that. Well, since you did uh, take up the job of a full-time job of being mayor of London, there were certain things that you actually did to abate the the air pollution problem in London. It becomes very relevant because you're travelling to Delhi very soon. Uh, Delhi, for the longest time, has been suffering from you know, catastrophic levels of air pollution. We've been finding workable solutions from all over the world, but there, was a, there were a slew of measures that you actually adopted to, to fix that problem in London. Are there any lessons to be learned for mega cities like Delhi? Well, I, think, well, I think we've got to be very careful uh, one city lecturing another city. Of course. Uh, this is a partnership approach, and uh, there are challenges in Delhi, in London, in New York, in Mumbai around air quality. Actually, urbanization, people moving from villages to cities around the world is leading to complex issues. It's a fantastic thing in relation to you know, bringing people together. Uh, and we've got to think inevitably about how we get more people right. living in confined spaces but not making the, the environment worse. Right. So in London, we're doing things like making sure we encourage more people to walk, cycle, and use public transport. We're also making sure the public transport is clean, not diesel, uh, not petrol, uh, but you know, electric or hybrid or hydrogen. Uh, Delhi's doing some really exciting things uh, as well. So I'm a firm believer in learning from each other. Uh, that that, that it's, we're equal partners. Right. And uh, you know, I go to, to Delhi with, in a spirit of fraternity right. and uh, respect. And, and of course, anything we can do to work together, I'm happy to do. Thank you so much for speaking. That's the Bloomberg Quinn. So, thank you. Nice talking to you.